Well, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Aditi. I'm a software engineer working at Isovalin. And this talk features a uh, joint work with Martinez. A uh, bit of context into why debugging Kubernetes networking is uh, relevant for us. Uh, uh, Martinez and I work on uh, Cilium, uh, which is an open source uh, CNI uh, powered by uh, eBPF. And we work with uh, one of the most sophisticated set of users uh, and to enable them uh, to network and secure their uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to share our debugging experiences and present a new tool that we have developed using eBPF. So let's take a, a, a common Kubernetes cluster where a request is coming onto uh, Kubernetes node and it's, built, it's being delivered to uh, a service pod. So the request traffic will first get processed at NIC. It will then get routed to a uh, Linux kernel networking stack and then uh, it will traverse from host network namespace to uh, the pod network namespace via a couple of uh, with, uh devices pair. So whenever there are network connect connectivity issues, we start with control plane, uh, checking all the configurations are correct, our services, uh, our services are deployed, the service pod is up and running, and we always make sure that it's not the DNS. Uh, but today I wanna draw attention to a key component that often uh, treated as a black box, and that's the Linux kernel network. Debugging Linux kernel networking is hard, and let's zoom in to see why that is. So this is a detailed uh, network flow diagram of uh, Linux kernel network internals. And as you can see, there are overwhelming number of uh, packet processing functions. So when you send a single packet, uh, it requires many, many hops until it reaches its destination. Uh, so sure, there are like packet counters and uh, uh, stats that you can observe. Uh, but these are not enough uh, to get to the uh, root cause uh, because kernel state can't be observed uh, in real time uh, in an easy manner. So we have this internal uh, joke uh, that whenever we are trying to pa uh, track a packet in Linux kernel, uh, it's like finding Waldo. One can easily feel lost when they uh, fall down the uh, rabbit hole of Linux kernel networking. So next we are gonna uh, look at some of our uh, uh, most go-to tools. Um, so one of our most favorite tools is TCP dump. And we always reach for it whenever uh, there are like network connectivity issues. And I agree that uh, it's a good tool to start your debug routine. But the problem with TCP dump is that it only gives you high level information because uh, the TCP tap, uh, TCP dump tap points are at the periphery of Linux kernel networking stack. But in real life, uh, situation is much more complex and either the packets are dropped in the NIC or in the stack or in the pod network namespace uh, and so on and so forth. So next up, moving on to like uh, traditional logging based methods, uh, whenever developers don't have access to good uh, debugger, uh, they always rely on logging-based uh, debugging. So kernel exposes this uh, printk function, which you can use to add debugging statements in the kernel code, but uh, it requires recompiling the kernel and in many cases reboot. So it's not a viable option in production environments. If you're not careful with uh, your debug statements, uh, it, it can cause kernel panics. In short, it's, it's very slow. Uh, it has very slow debugging uh, cycles because uh, it requires many, many iterations. Uh, let's say you ruled out that DNS is not the issue here uh, and you wanna now trace packets going to the Cube API server, you can't easily do that. So moving on to uh, some, some of the generic tracing tools. Uh, so a couple of examples are perf or BPF trace. Uh, so PERF is a performance measuring tool that also allows you to trace calls to some of the network, uh, Linux kernel network uh, functions. And if you have used PERF before, then you can identify uh, the snippet that I've added uh, on the slide. So in this case, I'm using PERF record to 
uh, record all the calls that are going to uh, SKB uh, fr uh, free uh, SKB free function that which is uh, which is invoked whenever a packet is dropped in the kernel. And perf script is then used to dump traces uh, that are collected from perf record. And as you can see, uh, the output uh, is very limited. Uh, it doesn't have uh, limit, uh, it has very limited filtering uh, capabilities. So if you're trying to debug a DNS issue, you can't specify, hey, I wanna trace all the uh, packets that are going to port 53. Uh, there is no information about, let's say, for example, source or destination IP addresses, ports. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, whenever you use port record, you have to specify what function you're trying to trace uh, calls to. And in many cases, uh, you don't have that information when you're starting out with debugging uh, an issue. So we, we approach this debugging uh, problem in a, a very different manner. So, uh, not all network connectivity issues involve packet drops. And uh, if I want to introspect, introspect kernel uh, network state in a, uh, in a fine-grained manner, then is there any uh, a way to get a, a list of all packet processing functions? Next up, uh, we want to get callbacks to, uh, to whenever these functions are uh, executed so that uh, we can analyze kernel state uh, 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 in a more detailed uh, uh, fashion. But more importantly, uh, we want to filter these callbacks only for traffic that's relevant for us. So this is the wish list that Martinez and I came up with. And uh, this brings, to, uh, brings me to the second part of my presentation where, uh, where we are going to find answers to these questions uh, using eBPF. So uh, eBPF has captured the imagination of many in recent years. Uh, and uh, companies like Facebook, Netflix, Isovalent uh, are using eBPF to solve a spectrum of use cases. Uh, to, so, so to set the context for our new tool, uh, let's look at what eBPF is. So eBPF is an in-kernel virtual machine uh, that safely executes native code on certain events. It's highly programmable and it's performant because the code is executed directly in the kernel. And because of this reasons, uh, it's touted as the JavaScript uh, for the kernel. And uh, le let's unpack this information uh, with an end-to-end -end workflow uh, next. So here I have uh, a, a simple uh, BPF program where I've added a k-probe to one of the uh, network functions in Linux kernel. And k-probes is a de debug mechanism uh, uh, in Linux kernel where uh, it allows you to execute BPF programs when, whenever any kernel uh, instruction is executed. So where, when you attach a k-probe uh, in, in your BPF program to a Linux kernel function, uh, your BPF program will be executed whenever uh, that function is called. So in this case, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm getting callback, uh, uh, or rather I hope that I'll get callback whenever IP local deliver function is executed. And SKB is the Linux uh, representation of packet. So in this program, uh, uh, I'm going to parse that SKB, uh, dump some fields, uh, and let's look at what how we can compile it next. So this program is compiled using Clang. Uh, which outputs an ELF uh, binary that contains BPF bytecode. It's ne it next fed to an eBPF loader. So the loader is gonna parse the uh, uh, ELF uh, file and uh, uh, the binary and uh, it's gonna uh, set the context for this uh, uh, program, which includes like setting the type. So in this case, the program type is BPF proc type k probe. And this type is gonna decide what kernel state this my program is going to have access to. Next, uh, the loader triggers loading and verification of this program. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that uh, BPF, uh, the kernel ensures that BPF programs are run safely. So eBPF verifier is tasked with ensuring that. Uh, the ver verifier will ensure that your program doesn't have a uh, null pointer dereferences or it's not trying to access any out-of-bound memory. Uh, 
and whether your program terminates or not. And if you have written fair amount of uh, uh, BPF, uh, if you've done a fair amount of BPF programming, then I'm sure you have interesting stories to tell about uh, uh, how you fought with the verifier. So once uh, the verifier approves your program, uh, is JIT compiled to native code? And I mentioned earlier that eBPF follows an event-driven model. So what does it mean in this case? Uh, in my program, I've attached a K probe to IP local deliver function. So this function uh, delivers packet to a local destination. Uh, so let's say uh, a packet is delivered on the ETH0 interface on your Kubernetes node, and uh, it's supposed to be uh, delivered to a local ETHering port, then uh, the packet will be uh, executed by IP local deliver function where it reassembles IP fragments and uh, hands it off to the uh, next level, ne uh, level uh, layer, excuse me, which is the transport layer. So uh, in this case, uh, it's gonna generate an event uh, and my BPF program is going to be executed. And as the BPF program, if you, uh, uh, if you can see uh, just before it returns, uh, it, it writes this uh, notification to BPF map. So BPF map is a shared data structure between kernel and user space. And that's how uh, kernel relays this information to the uh, user space. So great, yeah. Uh, just as we uh, traced uh, callbacks to the IP local deliver function, can we just get a list of all the uh, net kernel uh, network pro uh, packet processing functions and just keep like a hard-coded list? Uh, not exactly, because kernel function signature can change across kernel versions. So kprobe API is, is considered unstable. Hmm. So how do we reliably get debug information about uh, different kernel uh, function signatures? So that's where BTF comes into play. Uh, BTF is short for BPF type format, and it's a debug format uh, that stores information like function signatures, uh, different uh, data structures that are defined in uh, uh, kernel, and so on and so forth. But the cool thing about BTF is that it's super compact. So in recent kernels, it's packaged in uh, kernels by default. So kernel exposes, exposes its own debug information uh, like function signature and different data uh, structure types via a sysfs interface. Uh, and yeah, okay. So uh, just to get a sense of what BTF information looks like, uh, I've dumped a, uh, a BTF information for a, a simple uh, function that accesses the SKB uh, uh, structure. Uh, and on the right, you can see that uh, it gives you information about various types. So if you start at the top, uh, it, it tells you that, that there is a pointer to the structure SKBuff and what different S, uh, members does the SKBuff structure has and what are their respective offsets. But one uh, important type that I wanna highlight here is the func proto. Uh, func proto defines uh, function signature so what kind of uh, arguments uh, does a function accept? What, what's the written type is? So with this, uh, let's revisit our wish list. So uh, we mentioned that, hey, we wanted a reliable way to get the list of all the network uh, processing, uh, network uh, packet processing uh, functions in the kernel. And we can easily get that information from the BTF file. Next, we can attach K probes to all of them. So uh, just as K probes allow you to execute BPF function when a function is executed, K red probes uh, uh, are, uh, allow, you, allow your BPF programs to be executed uh, when a function that it's, uh, where, where the function where it, the K red probe is attached is uh, returned. And uh, more importantly, we can easily uh, filter callbacks using, uh, with the help of BPF maps. So with this background, I'm really excited to present Peru. Uh, Peru is an eBPF-based uh, Linux kernel debugger, and Peru is short for packet, where are you? Uh, uh, conceptualization of this tool, uh, the credit for conceptualization of this tool goes to uh, Martinez. And next, we are going to uh, 
take a walkthrough of the uh, Peru internals. So Peru consists of a, a user space agent uh, written in Go, and it interfaces with user to collect uh, filter information. So uh, let's say uh, I'm trying to debug traffic that's going to the uh, Cube API server pod. So I run Peru with this filter parameters where I set the protocol to TCP, destination IP set to the uh, uh, cube API uh, pod IP and the destination port is set to uh, uh, 443. Next, Peru goes ahead and programs this information in this filter map, which is a BPF map. Uh, it then uses the Cilium, uh, excuse me, sorry. It then uh, uses the Cilium eBPF loader uh, to collect uh, BTF information for the cur uh, underlying kernel. So in this case, it's going to do a, a call to this uh, SysFS interface. Uh, it's going to search all the kernel uh, functions, and then it's just going to uh, get uh, iterate over that list and uh, filter them to collect uh, pack uh, collect functions that accept SKB as one of the parameters. And just a reminder, SKB is the uh, packet representation in the Linux kernel. It then goes ahead and uh, loads our, our eBPF programs to all these functions. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, I'm interested in getting uh, callbacks from the uh, Linux kernel whenever my packet goes through all the uh, network functions in the Linux kernel. So uh, for example, uh, in the previous example, we saw how uh, my BPF program was executed or uh, whenever IP local deliver function was called. Uh, so the E0, for example, is, is the first event that gets uh, called whenever my packet is uh, executed by IP local deliver. IP local deliver is then going to hand off that packet to uh, parse t uh, layer four, which is like TCP in this case. Uh, so that's going to be E1. Uh, the one thing that I want to highlight here is that uh, my BPF program is going to filter all these callbacks based on the uh, filter information that it uh, receives uh, from the BPF map. All right, so uh, in the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that uh, Linux kernel networking is treated as a black box. And uh, because of the uh, complexity that's involved. so. Uh, with the help of Peru, I, I hope I can convince you to uh, give it a try and see how easy it is to debug uh, Linux kernel networking issues. So in the lower half of, uh, uh, of the uh, clip, I've, I'm running Peru with a set of filters. Uh, so for example, I'm filtering traffic destined to 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, uh, destination port 80, and protocol is set to TCP. So uh, I have added an IP table rule here, uh, which is going to drop packets to this destination and port uh, tapu. And whenever I run a curl request, it's going to generate uh, output trees. And I'm, I'm going to know that, oh, OK, yeah, this is where uh, my packet is getting uh, dropped. So in the next uh, few slides, uh, we are going to look at real world examples and how Peru helped us to debug uh, those uh, 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 scenarios. So the first example, uh, I have a Kubernetes cluster uh, where I'm running a, a multi-homing setup. Uh, what does it mean? So in this setup, a pod is assigned IP addresses from uh, two different IP subnets. So let's uh, do a request walkthrough from right of the screen to the left, uh, where a pod is trying to reach the Kube API server pod in my cluster. So the pod does a curl request uh, uh, where the source IP address is set to the pod IP address and the destination is the cube service uh, cluster IP. This request is going to hit the IP table rule that's installed by cube proxy. Uh, and the rule says states that, hey, uh, all the traffics that's destined to uh, cube service uh, cluster IP, uh, it needs to be denoted to cube API server pod IP address. So uh, after the rule, we can see that the destination IP address has been translated from the cluster IP to the IP address of the Kube API server pod. 
this request reaches the destination Kubernetes node uh, and it's routed through the ETH1 interface and then it's delivered uh, to the Kube API server pod. Now the Kube API server pod is gonna send a reply back. The source IP address is uh, correctly set to the IP address of the Kube API server and the destination IP address is the IP address that was, uh, uh, that was received in the uh, request packet. And this packet is being routed through ETH0, not ETH1. Uh, and there is no surprise that this reply never reaches the source. So let's see how Peru helps, and helps us in debugging this uh, issue. So here uh, I, I'm, uh, I've, I'm running Peru uh, with a bunch of filters. Uh, I'm filtering traffic going to uh, destination port 443, which is the uh, uh, which is where Kube API server pod is uh, listening on. And I've set the protocol to TCP. And I invite you to look at the output of Peru here. The NFS, uh, so this is the trace of all the kernel uh, functions that my uh, traffic of interest is uh, going through. So NF hook slow uh, is the kernel function that's executed to implement uh, uh, IP table rules. And uh, we can see that the source IP address in this case is still set to 192.168 and not the uh, IP address from uh, the, the subnet where that's used to connect to the Kube API server. So that's why this packet will, uh, will be dropped when, when it's sent out of the ETH1 interface. Next up, uh, we frequently have MTU misconfiguration issues in our clusters. So I have a simple setup here where uh, I have a single node Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, my UDP pod is uh, getting traffic from an external uh, entity. And, that ex uh, and the size of the UDP packet is uh, pretty large. And uh, the sender has said uh, don't fragment bit uh, on, on this request. So this request is gonna traverse through uh, the ETH1 interface on the Kubernetes node and then uh, it's gonna uh, traverse through the uh, VETH uh, devices pair, and then uh, it's gonna be delivered to the UDP pod. And uh, based on the MTU information, we can see that there is a mismatch. So let's see what happens to the uh, traffic. So again, I'm running Peru, uh, but this time I have changed, uh, I've set the protocol to UDP. Uh, the destination port uh, is 443 and uh, I, have, uh, I have a new filter here, which says output meta, uh, which is going to print a bunch of SKB uh, members here. So as you can see, uh, the, there is a mismatch between packet length and uh, MTU that's configured on the if index. And the if index uh, 18 refers to the ETH1 and seven refers to uh, the VETH0. And as a result, this packet will be dropped. So lastly, uh, uh, there is a security mechanism in Linux kernel. Uh, it's called reverse path filter. Uh, it essentially ensures that uh, the source uh, uh, address set on packet, uh, received packet is routable via the same interface that it came in. And this is to ensure that there are no spoofed uh, uh, packets where IP address, the source IP address is spoofed. So in this case, uh, I, have a, I have an incoming request uh, coming to my pod uh, let, let's say this is my service pod and the request is uh, translated, uh, denoted to my pod. So the destination is set to the pod IP address. So when this request is received on the ETH1 interface on my uh, uh, Kubernetes node, uh, there is an RP filter uh, configured on this uh, interface by default and it's set in the strict mode. So this request will be dropped because if you look at the uh, uh, IP route table here, uh, it says that all the traffic that's, uh, that's uh, destined to 10.0.0 slash 24 subnet, uh, it needs to be received on the VETH0 interface. But in this case, we are receiving it on ETH1. So uh, let's see what information Peru uh, gives us here. So this time I have uh, set the destination IP filter, uh, which is set to my pod IP uh, and we can see that the packet is being dropped. And let's see why that is. So just before the packet is dropped, we can see that uh, there is a callback from fib validate source uh, function. 
So this uh, kernel function essentially executes the RP reverse path filter logic, uh, where it 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 will uh, check if what's the uh, source IP address on this packet is, and if it's received on the interface uh, that it expected to. So here are the Peru highlights. Uh, Peru is an eBPS based open source tool to debug kernel networking. And it does so uh, by abstracting kernel networking details. But more importantly, Peru uh, exposes advanced filtering uh, capabilities. Um, and it prints packet level metadata so that you can introspect a kernel in a uh, fine grained manner. And it's portable across uh, kernel versions. So uh, some acknowledgments. Uh, so Peru uh, uses the eBPF uh, uh, kernel functionality uh, based, uh, based on K-probe. Uh, so uh, thanks to BPF kernel developers, Steven Rostet for uh, K-probes. Uh, we are using the BPF SN printf BTF function that's exposed in the kernel uh, so that uh, we can print SKB uh, members in a safe manner. And Peru uses uh, Cilium eBPF uh, Go library as an eBPF loader to load our, uh, to load eBPF uh, functions. And lastly, uh, we recently discovered that I, th there is this uh, new function, uh, new tool. It's called IP, IPF, IPF Trace 2. Uh, and it has some similar uh, 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 functionalities as uh, Peru, and it was uh, released before Peru. So we are acknowledging it here. So, yeah, thanks for your time, and I open it for questions.